Hey everybody, Joy here. I know. You can see I'm here in the vast emptiness of my old sewing studio. <laughs> we came back yesterday. I am so, so sorry I haven't been making videos. I've tried. I've really tried. I've gone around the other house. I've shown you what we've done here, what we've done there. But then somebody will come over or we'll have to go somewhere or something will get delivered and we'll have to put it together. It's just something all the time, all the time, all the time. <laughs> and here it's just me and it's just Jerry. And you know, he's always over in his barn and I'm always up here. Although today's going to be a little different because we came back with the trailer full of boxes of things that I took up there that I'm having to bring back. So we're gonna start the morning out by building three thread racks. You may remember in the other room I have the, um, oh, that great big board with all the holes in it. What do you call it? <laughs> It'll come to me. <laughs> I had it put up when I built the house, when Jerry and I built the house back in 1998. And I had my three great big thread racks on it with all of my embroidery isocord thread on it. So I am putting three new ones that still have to be put together. We're going to bring them up this morning, put them together, and I'll show you when we do it. And I'm going to hang it back up on that pegboard. It's pegboard. <laughs> Boy, that was quick for my mind. Okay, other than that, I brought some fabrics. I brought some patterns. Um, you know, I have some patterns, some fabric here, but I want to make some blouses. I need some more blouses. And the clothes that I have up at the other house are only the clothes I had in the RV. That's the only things I have at the other house. And so I'm not used to wearing the same thing over and over. The neighbors probably think that poor lady she bought that house and she only has three tops. <laughs> I've got more than that, but still, I'm just not used to wearing the same thing over and over. I mean, here, I hardly ever wash my tops because I might wear them once a year, you know, because I've made so many. So, I plan on making some new tops. I'll show you my thinking on that and how I do it. And um, I'll show you Jerry and I hanging the horse, depending if he's going to be nice today. Sometimes he gets real gritchy when he has to do jobs like that because he'd rather be outside on his bulldozer. <laughs> so we shall see. But hello, 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 all of you. I miss you just as much as you miss me. I really do and I feel so bad when I can't make videos. And I apologize for the echo, but until I get my quilts hung back up on the wall, I never did have carpet in here, but you know, I had tons of fabric and I guess that helps absorb the echo. And out in the other room, there's carpet, so it might be better out there. But right now, I better go downstairs, go out in the driveway to where Jerry's truck is attached to the trailer, and the trailer is attached to all my boxes. So, I'll be back after a while. So, I told you we're going to build thread racks, right? So, let me show you how they come, first of all. There's a man that makes these, and they're really, really nice. They come in a box like this. And the man sells them on Etsy, and he only sells them certain months of the year. So I used to have three of them here, but then we moved, right? And so I have to use the first three at my other house. So you unwrap these four boards is what you do. See? And then these four boards make the frame. I'll show it to you when it's done. And then these boards are marked or cut. Let me see if I can figure this out. They're cut because there's a whole bunch of these with the spools on them. And so they fit. You see how they can fit down in the slots? Yeah. And so that's how you make them. So the hardest part is what Jerry's doing, where he's screwing the big long screws to put the frame together. But. Are there holes pre-drilled for that, Jerry? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for the frame. For the frame? Yeah, there's holes. They're not that giant of screws. They're kind of little. And so I think a girl could do it. <laughs> we shall see. Years ago when I ordered my first set of these, one of these was broken or missing or bent or something. 
And so I let him know, and he immediately sent me another one. So it's a really nice guy, and he does beautiful work. Now, my first ones were spray-painted white. These aren't. He doesn't do spray-paint white anymore. And so this is stained. It's um, ivory or cream or something like that. It's you can see up close. So we'll finish building them, and then I'll show you how we hang them up and on the table. White. Huh? And white, so it's yeah, you can beat your husband with it. It's called antique white, he says. I'll bring you back when we get ready to hang it on the cardboard. All right, Jerry's got the hoop put together. No, See, they hard. give you the screws. Two there, two here. This doesn't look straight right here. No. It looks kind of crooked. No. And so then, you see these red dots? They go with the red dots somewhere. See on the spools, red dots, red dots. So it's real easy. How come there's just one red dot? That's all there is. Oh, there is. It's just on one side. Because so, it's the bottom to the top here. What? This water system. How come? This says frame top, rear. Yeah, well that's not, uh, if you do it like that, then everything falls out. Well, you got it backwards? You got the top on the yeah, bottom? Yeah, but, yeah. Why don't you just turn it around the other way? And make that be the top. I don't want to do that. How come? That's probably why the screws are coming up around here. Well, how do you know which way's the top? It tells you right on here. I know, but how do you know which way on this stick is the top? This is the top. The bottom is on the bottom on the top. I need to switch them. How do you know by this stick? Because these have to go. So he doesn't. So evidently, it's harder than I thought. You don't know which which is the top and which is the bottom until you try to put a spool in. Well, these spools. Have They're to exactly the same. The top and. It has to go in like that. I know. But it has to be this. But why don't you just make... This says frame top. It's not the frame top, though, Joy. If well, it says it's the frame top. I know. Okay, I'm we'll be switching. back later. We don't know what the heck we're doing. I'm switching. <laughs> Guess what my wife has me doing again. I am putting together more sewing equipment. You can't even imagine how many pieces of sewing equipment I have put together. They can imagine. In the last two but weeks. why? But let's tell them why. Look at the camera and tell them why. We have to have three more spool holders. Because I decided to keep this house rather than sell it. So now we got to split everything up. Which I probably made a mistake when I said that. Because now we're back here doing all this again. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, he's work. got the frame ready. So this is the frame bottom. That's the frame top, and you got all of these cutouts in here. So we're gonna do you start at the bottom or start at the top? I remember there's a way. And then there's the red. So here's a red, and there's a red. So I don't know if it goes like this. Does it go like that? Yeah. Then we have to stand it up. Correct. Okay, so we're going to start putting these little spools in here. This is the nicest rack. Where do you see it done? I'll hand them to you. Yay! You got to put a red dot to red dot. Here. Red dot to red dot. I'll yeah. turn it so the red dot's to that side. Oh, these are so nice. I hope you all can see the spool. The spools in the camera. Red dot duty. Okay, we just discovered we have to put something else on it before we can do this part, so I'll come back again. Okay, it's time to put the little spools in again. What Jerry did was he attached these little hangers on here. I'm not going to need them for this house because they're going on pegboard like I'm going to show you, but he wanted to put them on there just in case we buy a third house. And then we'll have to hang on the wall. That ain't gonna happen. That isn't gonna happen. That's backwards and upside down, isn't it? Where's the red dot? Red dot duty is. Where's the red dot? This side? Yeah. Red dot's that side. Red dot. And so you just slide these. This, this is very, very well made. The man's been making these for years because I ordered them. Goodness, six, seven, quite a few years ago, and Philly did too. 
So I highly recommend them. And this has, oh, I don't remember how many spools it holds, a bunch, 140 or something like that. And you can get them so they hold little thread or big thread, I think. But this is going to hold all my isocord spools. Why are 144 spools. Well, that was quick math. I said 140, I was close. Yeah. I can't see this side there. That's right. So this is just awesome. Awesome. Let me see if all the reds are on the same side. Yeah. No, there's a red. Well, I know, but all these got to point up. They got to point up. So here's a red. These are so nice. They also come in regular wood color. Oak, I think. Yeah, I this, this is oak woodwork. It's yeah. oak to start with. Yeah. I would have ordered it from just oak. But I originally ordered these for the other house. <laughs> and so I wanted white there. We have enough brown in that house, as y'all know. We got our living room furniture the couches, but we haven't gotten the other furniture that goes in the living room yet. So, probably another four weeks, I would say. All right. Uh-oh. Maybe you have to start at the top. Um, no, there you go. Okay, so turn it around and show everybody the awesomeness of this thread rack. Look here, 144 spools. And of course, I had to bring the thread back also <laughs> that's going to go on here. I actually have two complete sets of all the colors of the isocord threads because I used to have a house in Edmond, remember? And so I had all the threads up there too. So this is really exciting. So I wanted to show you that. I'll put a link below, and I'm, I'm not an affiliate or anything <laughs> at all. He wouldn't know me from Adam, the man that makes these. But I'll put a link below to tell you how to find them on Etsy if you're interested, because they are worth every penny. Let's hold it up close so they can see the spools. Look at that. They are very well made. This guy is an expert at putting these things together. I mean, all the screws line up perfectly and everything. I will tell you this, that when you're putting the hangers on the back, you need to go down a little bit. So the top of the hanger is the very top of the hanger. When it's up like that. Let's put it over here so they can see, my darling. Right at the top of where this Bot or this uh, top piece here goes across. It should be right here at the bottom of that. If you get too close to the end, it will split the wood. Ah, and that creates a real good problem. tip. So we're going to go put this up on the pegboard. You want to watch? Stay with us. So you have to keep all your pegboard hooks, which I did. Thank goodness. <laughs> Took them to the other house. Brought them back here. In all of those pegs, we had six of these. So we figured that must be what holds up these thread spools. See, you stick them in like that, and then we just hung the frame up over it. So, wonderful. All sewing rooms should have pegboard in them. <laughs> really, really love having it. And so you can see one up there. It's going to get something hung on it. And there's one there. And one there, and I'm starting to put my isocord thread that I moved to Mounds. And now, I moved it back to Kingston. So we went to lunch, and now we're back. We blew to the casino restaurant, and we blew back from the casino restaurant. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, it is windy in Oklahoma, my friends. So here's my thread I'm bringing back. Now this thread was already hung up in the other room but it was on a whole bunch of these little racks. So I've decided that I want to have it out here where the other thread used to be. Yes, I had two complete sets of this thread. <laughs> these down here don't count. Uh, those look like psychedelic threads from somewhere. Different racks have different colors. As you can see, greens, browns. So that's kind of how I'm trying to hang them back up. So I have to figure out 
what I want where. I started out here with the blacks and the whites on the top and then all the grays. And so, I don't know what color I want next. Yes, this is, I was gonna have both of my machines up there. And we're down here now. And so this is a hoop I got long, long, long time ago when I got my Elise mode. Some kind of a thing you do borders with. So I decided to bring it back here for my Elise mode. And guess what else I did? I have software that you can make your own embroidery designs with, or you can change somebody else's embroidery designs. I've made lots of my own embroidery designs. And it's called Bernina Designer Plus, I think is what it's called. And I've had it for many, many, many years. I bought it when it was version one, now it's version nine, so I have bought eight updates or upgrades or whatever you call them. So I have a small fortune in it. <laughs> but my computer here that was in my room, my big room in there on the pink tables, it's now our other house. And so I didn't have any computer software here. So this morning I called Bernina.com, I didn't call them, I emailed them, support at Bernina.com. And I said, can you have this software on more than one computer? And they actually answered me back quickly and said yes. Don't you love to smash the bubbles? It's great stress relief, I understand. So anyway, they said yes, you can actually have it on three machines. And you could use it on four, five, six, eight, ten as long as you only have three of them working at one time. So, I put it in my laptop. My laptop goes back and forth with me. But I, the last time I bought a laptop, I bought a laptop with two terabytes of storage. So I knew that there was plenty of room on it to store this software. So I put the Designer Plus software on my laptop, which means I can use it now with my Elisimo. That is here. I'll have to, um, the Lazy is not wireless like the Solaris is, but it doesn't matter anyway because I always put the designs on a flash drive. And if I can find a flash drive here somewhere, <laughs> because look at this cool hoop. It like slides up and down a border and then you just snap it or something. I've never used it, <laughs> but I might someday, you never know. <laughs> So all three racks are up. How many of you notice an issue? An issue that I have here. <laughs> it's an issue, all right. <laughs> Every single peg up there ought to have a spool of thread on it. Oh, I must have missed some thread racks from the other house is what must have happened. Um, tell me what color I'm missing. <laughs> I've got pink and blue and yellow and purple and red. I think there's a whole, whole, whole bunch more red. I really do. I think there's a whole bunch more red and a whole bunch more blue. So some of my thread racks got left at the other town. So we'll be packing and moving some more things. <laughs> we'll just overlook that for right now. <laughs> I brought home a lot of other things too markers and pens and rulers and things that I have lots and lots of space to put away here but I did not up there. It's very confusing still. Why haven't I shown you my other house yet? I have two sewing rooms downstairs and I have two sewing rooms upstairs plus I have closets and cupboards in other rooms where I have put things because I don't have this great big huge space there in one room. I have it, but not in one room. So I was uh, Zooming with my friend Philly, y'all remember Philly, and we did a Zoom um, almost all day, I think it was, one day. And what were we doing? Oh, she was finishing her little quilt that has the baskets. You've already seen my little quilt with the baskets. She hadn't made hers yet, so she made hers, and we were going to quilt them together on the Solaris with the edge-to-edge -edge feature that the Solaris has now. And my Solaris is up there. My Elisimo is here. So we both have a Solaris, and we were going to do it together. But it got late in the day, and we got tired, and we decided to just do it later. 
So we didn't finish that. But the thing was, I went upstairs to where my up-down tables are. And I got on my, uh, let me see, I have my laptop up there because we were Zooming with my laptop on my table and my Solaris is there. And I decided to start making another quilt. Oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you that. I did. I already had my baskets made and quilted and hanging on the ceiling here. So I wanted to do something while we were Zooming and I had downstairs several baggies and a box full of scraps. And so I decided, hey, let's do some crumb quilting. So I crumb quilted 10 inch squares and then I started cutting them up and then I had to find uh, something to be the background or the other color with it. And I had already done one with navy blue and I didn't want to do navy blue again, so I decided to do uh, beige. I had a stack of layer cakes in all different beiges. They're all different prints, but they're all kind of the same color. So you want to see that? <laughs> I, I think I cut up three of the um, 10 inch squares, took the 10 inch square of all the little scraps I sewed together, then I took the 10 inch layer cake, laid it on top of it, then I drew an X with a pencil, then I sewed quarter inch on each side of the X, then I cut it in eight places, and then I came up with half square triangles. So I took a picture just for you. Here it is. Okay, so what I started to tell you was, not that. <laughs> Everything I went to do, I had to go to a different sewing room to do it. I had to go to the long arm room to get something. I had to go to the sewing room in the front of the house to find something. I had to go in the room where I have all my jewelry to find something. And I was up and down those stairs, oh, 50 times at least. 50 times. I told Jerry, I have to have really strong legs. <laughs> but I won't have to do that forever because doing the project with Philly, I figured out, you know, I've got five pin cushions in this room and I don't have any pin cushions upstairs, see? And so I get two or three pin cushions and I make sure one was in each room. And scissors, you know, I have a whole bunch of scissors in one room and none in the other room. <laughs> and so I would get those all spread out. So that's kind of how the day was. Rotary cutter, oh, <laughs> rotary cutter. <laughs> I picked up a rotary cutter and I was trying to cut with it, and it was a different one. And so it's like, it's got a dark gray back on it and some color of a front. And so I did the little lever, and so the dark gray thing popped out. I assumed it was a blade. I tried and tried and tried to cut the material and nothing would cut. And finally it dawned on my lightning fast mind that there was no blade in it. So I had to run downstairs, go to a different room, find a blade, come back upstairs. <laughs> I know, I know. So, I love, love, love our new house in Mounds, Oklahoma. I just, there are so many things that have to be fixed and so many things that are not the way Jerry and I would have them if we had built the house. Uh, the paint, for instance, oh. And I'm not talking because it's brown. I'm talking about how poorly it was done, especially on the baseboards. And, you know, the fixtures that they put on the wall to hold your hand towels in the bathroom or to hold the toilet paper. And they just painted half of those, too. So things like that we don't like. We're just trying to put up with it. Fix little things one by one by one. But I still love it. And uh, one of these days, I promise I'll give you a tour and I'll show you what we've done uh, but it won't be soon because it's probably another month before we get the rest of our furniture in there and before I get you know things moved out of there that go here and whatever we'll figure it out later <laughs> I will show you though I promise and I know we missed shine yesterday the Sunday before we had company and we had to go to the airport and get our company and then come back and then when our company was there we didn't feel like we should do that with them there. So yesterday, Sunday, we were driving to come back here and we didn't get here till about three o'clock in the afternoon. When we got here, we had to unload that great big trailer. So yesterday, 
I, all I can say is I'm sorry. And until we get settled in both houses and the repairs are done and the deliveries are done, I just don't see how we're going to be on a regular basis for Shine or this YouTube channel. <laughs> ah, I miss you. I miss doing this. You see, Jerry's not up here. And there's no noise and there's no visitors and um, nobody ringing the bell and nobody doing anything and we're not going anywhere. We don't go anywhere here. I cook every night here. We go out to lunch some, but usually I cook every night when we're here because there's no restaurants. That's why I love it up there. There's restaurants everywhere. And we can just go whenever we want to. It's, it's really expensive, these restaurants. And I'm talking Red Lobster, Olive Garden. I mean, we're not eating at, you know, the Diamond Inn at the top of some skyscraper or something. <laughs> we just eat at normal places. <laughs> So, I know, but still, they're there, and we can go there when we want to, and that is very nice, because, you know, when you're in the house, that's a problem, that's why you know me, that's why you all know me, because I'm here all the time, 24-7, or I was, alone, I was alone, up here in this great big room, you see Jerry isn't here, Jerry's over in his barns, or he's on his dozer, or he's on his tractor, he put all my shelves together. Very, very nice of him. One of them's warped. This one right here is warped. But I told the man that made it, and I asked him if he would send me two new sides for that frame. We'll see if he does or not. So day by day, one day at a time, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> I want to make something. I want to make something so much. So... Let me go find something to make, and maybe I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll do a... What did the girl name this? See, it's been so long, I can't remember what she named it. Oh, my goodness. What did she call my day-to-day -day things? Oh, my goodness. My memory. It's my YouTube channel. You'd think I could remember what it's called. <laughs> so long with joy. <laughs> oh, I'll figure it out and I'll be back. <laughs> this is the day after the day before. <laughs> this is February 20, 2024, and it's a Tuesday. And yesterday was a holiday, so today the mail lady's going to bring all our mail that's been held for the last two or three weeks. <laughs> so, I may not get this edited until tomorrow at the rate we're going. Jerry's moving the recliners back up here. He's going to need my help in a minute. I've got bubble paper all over the floor. <laughs> this moving is just like it never, ever ends. Philly finally got done with her moving. Bless her heart. <laughs> and so she's sewing, she's embroidering. So I wanted to sew, but as it turns out, all my hard work picking patterns and choosing fabric to go with the patterns at the other house I got the patterns down here, but the fabric's still up there. So, I thought, I wonder if there's any other place up here where I might have some fabric. <laughs> Do y'all think I found some? <laughs> you remember the last time I was up here working, I found the big um, stair light box full of nets? Well, I just found another one. <laughs> but it's only half full. What is on my face? Oh my goodness, I've been outside blowing leaves. That was not a big wart. That was a <laughs> Good gravy. I probably got them in my hair and everywhere. Leaves everywhere here because we have a zillion trees. So anyway, I went out into the attic and I was looking through my backings because I bought a lot of 108 inch wide backings for the back of my quilts. But when I was looking at them, I found some that didn't look like they were 108 inches wide. So evidently I put them out there to use for backings for some reason and then I never used them. <laughs> so I found two yardages, or is it just one? I think I found just one. I found two but one was 108, I had to put it back. So I found a pretty pink, it's in the washing machine downstairs. So I'm going to wash it, hopefully make a new blouse out of it. And then in my new Sterilite plastic box, I've been wanting to embroider something. Number one, I want the Elysimo to know I'm still alive and I still know how to use it and see if it still works. <laughs> so 
So I found this pretty piece. It's just a tone on tone, some kind of cotton, pretty. And so I can embroider that easily. I really like it. Now the problem is I don't know if these have been washed, but looking at the way the, the strings are hanging, I think they're washed. Yeah, this is another one that's 45 inches wide. So I can make a blouse out of it. I don't like gray. You, you never ever ever see me in gray, hardly. <laughs> I think I have a couple gray t-shirts. But I, uh, this is long, long enough to uh, make a nice top with long sleeves or whatever. I, now here's the washing thing. If I'm gonna make a quilt, I never wash the fabric. If I'm going to make a garment, I always wash the fabric, okay? So that's the joy rule on that. I'll have to go look in the mirror and see what that looks like. Then I found this piece, and this looks like a piece I bought at the fancy lady shop. There used to be a shop in Tulsa called Merchants, something Merchants. I don't remember the whole name, but it was owned by two ladies, and they were older, probably the age I am now, and they have really, really nice fabric. I mean, this, this feels like it might have silk in it. Very pretty. So I can make a blouse out of this. Now used to, I would say, hey, I don't look good in that color, but I think in my old age I look good in this. And I like anything that's got the color of blue jeans in it. And this has the color of blue jeans in it. So I really like that. Dresses. I'm not going to be wearing dresses. And if I do need to wear a dress, I have plenty of them. I pulled this out. Why it's back there in the backing, backings, I do not know. But maybe I put it back there because it's a muslin. And it's for, it's real soft, it's nice material. Um, I thought, oh, I can embroider that. But since I have this one to embroider now, God, I almost hate to waste it. You know, if I embroider something, I kind of think of it as very casual. Uh, especially, you know, I put big chickens <laughs> carrying material. <laughs> Maybe I could put something a little dressier. Let's do that. Let's put something a little dressier on this one because it's beautiful fabric. So that's my morning. Um, I opened up more boxes. I still don't have my extra spools of isocord thread here. All that thread out there that you saw me doing in the earlier clip is isocord. And I have every color in it two times because I had it for Edmund and I had it for here. So there's way more spools somewhere. Now I have filled up my, how many do I have? Three. I have three of those big racks of just isocord up there at the other house and every single spool has something on it. And here <laughs> I'm missing a whole bunch of colors. So hopefully they'll show up when I go back up to the other house. It would be so much easier if we just could have moved everything, but <laughs> boy, <we> didn't. <laughs> Every time something happens and it's frustrating, and I'll say, now whose fault was this, Jerry? Whose fault is this, Jerry? <laughs> it's my fault. It's my fault. So I really don't have anything else to tell you or show you. We're going to be dragging up the bottom of recliners here in a minute and putting the chairs back out there in the movie room and I've got six clips from yesterday I still need to edit so I think I'll make this a really short snippet so you all can have a video and at least know we're live and well and we're here at our other house in Kingston and we'll probably be here a couple weeks and you know I want to sew so much I have a couple boxes left of things to open but everything that's in those two boxes came from here came from that desk out there, came from those cupboards over there, so I'll just open them up and put everything back where I got it to start with. <laughs> so that won't be a problem. And then I want to sew, but I can't sew when Jerry keeps coming up here and we're arranging furniture. So I'm going to say goodbye for this video, but I'll try, I'll try to turn the camera on when I'm getting ready to make a blouse. I wanted to make this blouse actually, and I worked on it for a couple hours yesterday. The pattern for it, you all, I always get compliments on this blouse. I'll show you the pattern. It's Hot Patterns, I hate that name, Hot Patterns 1189. And 
That's it right there. So I imagine you go to hotpatterns.com or something if you really like this. Here's the uh, striped version that I'm wearing. See the striped version right there? So I had to cut this pattern up in so many pieces. Here's the front of that pattern. And you can see how chopped up it is. Maybe, you, no, I think you can see from the front. So you've got stripes this way, stripes this way, stripes this way, and I had this all cut up, and I had to tape it all back together, plus I had to put full bust adjustment in it. But, I've made it three times, three times, made it three times, three pieces of material on the back, and the tops are just way, this one fits me the best, I may have taken this one in because it fits me the best, but the others, oh, See, I can take in the hips, especially the bust area, especially the shoulders. So I took it in last night. I, I cut it down to a size 10 instead of a 12. And I'm going to maybe make another one of those, but we'll see. My mood changes hourly. <laughs> depending on how many times I've climbed the stairs, depending on if the plumber comes or not, depending if Jerry hollers at me to help him get those recliners up here. So. I'm going to say goodbye so I can get this video up for you tonight, and then maybe I'll start another one tomorrow. I love y'all. Bye for now.